Jody O'Brien. I went to Rebner Elementary School in Sterling Heights. I went to Eastern Michigan University here in Ypsilanti for my undergraduate degree, and I also went back for my Master's of Social Work. Um, I am a social worker here at Erickson Elementary. Uh, social workers do a lot of different things. Um, I used to work at U of M Hospital, and now I'm here at the school doing something really different. My daughter calls me a feelings teacher. Um, one of the things I do is help kids do, figure out how to deal with some big feelings. Sometimes big feelings are things that happen here at school, and sometimes they're things that happen when we're outside of school that come with us to school. Um, another thing I do as a social worker at school is I work with families. I work with the moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas that have kids here at Erickson and to see what we can do to make everybody feel welcome here at Erickson and um, just make sure that everyone's feeling as comfortable as they can and have all the things that they need. Um, one of the reasons Miss Kay asked me to read the books I'm about to read are, is because I am part of the Lumbee tribe which is a tribe of American Indians out of North Carolina, Lumberton, North Carolina. Um, that's where my grandfather was raised, was born and raised, and um, somewhere we used to go back and visit quite a bit. Hi friends, I would love for you to join me in reading this book, Stolen Words. It is written by Melanie Florence, illustrated by Gabrielle Gim Grim, Grimard. And I am going to admit I was super nervous to read this book. There are some words in it from the Cree, uh, Cree Indian language, and that is unfamiliar to me. So I have been practicing and listening to the words, and I even have written myself some notes to try to say them correctly. She came home from school today, skipping and dancing, humming a song under her breath, clutching a dream catcher she had made from odds and ends, bits of string, plastic beads, and brightly colored feathers. Her glossy braids danced against her shoulders, swaying with her, black as a raven's wing. Grandpa, she asked, clutching his hand spinning under his arm before dropping it again. How do you say grandfather in Cree? He stopped breathing for a moment. A lifetime to a seven-year-old. He looked down at her sadly. I don't remember, he answered. I lost my words a long time ago. A frown clouded her face. How do you lose words, grandpa, she asked. They took them away, he answered. She thought for a moment. Where did they take them, she asked. Where they took all of us, he answered. Away from home, away from laughter and soft words, away from our mothers who cried for us. She reached for his gnarled hand. Who took you away, Grandpa, she asked quietly. Men and women dressed in black talking to us with words we did not know, he answered. They reached home and sat on the stairs together. Where did they take you, Grandpa? She asked. Away to a school that was cold and lonely, where angry white faces raised their voices and their hands when we used our words, he answered. They took our words and locked them away, punished us until we forgot them, until we sounded like them. Harsh, sharp words, so different from the sound of our beautiful ones. She touched his weathered face, tried to wipe the sadness away with her soft hands. She looked down at her lap and handed him 
the dream catcher that she had made for her room. You take this, Grandpa, she said. Maybe it will help you find your words again. He smiled at her, his granddaughter, and touched her innocent face, a face that had never known hard words or raised hands. He smiled and kissed her head. The next day, she skipped out of school again, smiling widely at her grandfather. She stopped in front of him and took a deep breath. Tanse, Nimotsum, she said. His eyes widened. She smiled brighter than the sun. I found your words, Grandpa, she said. She pulled a tattered, well-worn paperback out of her book bag. Introduction to Cree, it said. My teacher helped me find this in, find this for you at the library. He reached for it, his hands shaking, opened it, feeling the soft, much loved pages under his fingers. No, Nahomsh, Nahomsim, he whispered. Granddaughter, the word felt familiar in his mouth. It felt like his home, his mother. He turned the pages of the book carefully. Masha na igin gun. Book. He turned another, word after word. Pikis kawewin. Language. His words. Pages and pages of them. He looked at his granddaughter. His nami nami. Awesome. Thank you, Tina Key, he said. Will you read to me, she asked, taking his hand in hers and leading him home. Will you teach me your words? His heart danced as he nodded, holding the book against his chest. So one thing that I really loved about this book is it has in the back the way to pronounce the words because they're different than what we know and it feels so good to learn something new for me. Thanks for joining me.